the series. I'm Gavin Verhey, joined here with Joey Pasco, and we're bringing you live coverage of uh, the Star City Games Open Series here in San Jose. We're going into round five. We're about to show this feature match between two players, one you know, one you might not have heard of. On the left, the man himself, LSV, Luis Scott Vargas. He's the one you probably heard of. He's the one you've probably heard of. He's, you know, one, one pro tours. He's done it all, basically. And even, he even has a goatee now. Like, what more could you possibly want? <laughs> um, so, so, uh, so LSV is playing counterbalance top. We saw his deck list earlier. Uh, it's a little different from stock. It's got like a main deck pyroblast, some, a main deck repeal, one Vidalian click, some spicy yeah, one ofs. But it's pretty close. As you can see, he's happy, pretty happy there. On your right, someone you might not know, Brett Allen. He originally lived in Seattle, and we hung out a lot at PTQs. He moved down to California a few years back. Right, he's playing green and taxes, which Lewis Laskin, right, mm -hmm. made top eight with with made top eight with last week. Um, and the cool thing about his Brett Allen is we'll get deck lists here in a moment, but he usually varies up the deck lists, add in some uh, cute little things. So I'm curious to see uh, what Brett Allen has added to this deck. Yeah, it looks like Laskin came in fourth place. Yeah, and let's bring up the deck list so we can yeah, kind of see what we, we should be expecting. So this is and the deck list very, from yeah. last week, just to uh, keep that in mind. This is not the same list, or potentially not the same list that Brett yeah. Allen is running. Uh, we've got Jot and Grunt, which uh, was one of those cards where I was like, I remember it being 4-4, four, four, but I can't remember what it did. It's 4-4 uh, four, four for a white and one creature giant soldier, uncommon from Cold Snap. Uh, the cumulative upkeep is to put two cards in a single graveyard on the bottom of their owner's library. So obviously you need to have a stocked graveyard for the for the Jotun Grunt to uh, to be online. But uh, Aether Vial, uh, Sword of Fire and Ice, Knight of the Reliquary, Mother of Runes, which is a big one. Mother of Runes was one of those cards I remember playing with that in Standard, and uh, I, like just it was just so uh, so good, you know, just to have that sitting there. Like, good luck. Yeah, I mean, dealing it's, with it's such anything. a hard card to defeat. Right. Um, Kasali Pride Mage, Stoneforge Mystic, Tarmogoyf, Swords to Plowshares, uh, one copy of Umazawa's Jite, um, Gaddock Teague, Gaddock Teague, I'm sorry, and uh, Mangara of Kor Korondor, who we were talking about earlier, is uh, one of the Time Spiral rares that uh, it's got the ability to tap it. And uh, see, now this is this is important too. The cost is just to tap it. The uh, the effect is to remove Mangara of Korondor and target permanent from the game. So the reason that's relevant is because the list also runs Caracas, which is a legendary land, uh, old legendary land from Legends, um, and uh, it can tap for white and it can also tap to return target legend to owner's hand. So um, what happens is you activate Mangara's ability and with it on the stack you use Caracas's ability to return Mangara to your hand then the effect, the effect resolves, uh, but Mangara is in your hand now, and uh, you get to remove the permanent from the game and then reuse Mangara of Corridor. Right. So you, uh, with Aether Vial in play, it, it oh, can man. be really sick because you just have this reusable Vindicate. In, in the so, meantime, uh, so the, the match has started. started yeah. And I have this deck list, and this is spicy. So Brett has made some modifications. So, so at the first glance, things looked pretty similar. He's got like a, one Mox Diamond. Okay, sure, whatever. Right. A little bit of acceleration. Uh, he has Sword of Fire and Ice. Did uh, Lewis have Sword of Fire and Ice? I don't think he did. Uh, no, I didn't. No, okay, see so he's that. got Sword of Fire and Ice. But here's the big difference: one Bayou, two Scrubland, three Dark Confidant. Ah, so it's not just green and tax. It's green and taxes. It, it really and, is and, death and, and taxes. And, yeah, this is more death and taxes. Right? Um, so uh, I mean, he just has those Dark Confidants. Three is kind of a strange number, but I'm sure he's got reasoning. The the four was scratched out on here, so right. I think he must have made a last minute cut yeah. of a Dark Confidant. Um, um, in the meantime, he did have Mother of Runes in play, which uh, got plowed, uh, yeah. I guess. Mo Mother of Runes is gone, but that Aether Vial is taken up, which will be pretty good for him here. Yeah, so he's got an Aether Vial on two counters and an another one that has zero counters. Aether Vial is one of those cards that was deceptively good. Um, I remember when it was in Standard, it didn't even occur to me that uh, that it was, you know, putting the creature card into play... You know, I, I wasn't really thinking of it in terms of, oh, that means this can't be countered. I mean, I, when I first read the card, like, it literally just puts it into play. This is, you know, back in 2003 when uh, I guess I wasn't, wasn't looking at the rules like that. At least I wasn't thinking about the cards in the same way when I'd first read them. So. Yeah, and I mean, it also it's around restrictions. You can put, like, uh, uh, 
Silvergirl Adept and yeah. Terra Avenger in the battle on the battlefield with uh, Aether Vowel. So joining us is a Star City Game Standard Open Champion, Adam Prozac. Again. Not so good with, no, the, uh, with, the, the, standard, so with the extended portion. It's just how I drew it up, by the way. Yeah. Well, O2 Legacy. The O2 Legacy after being here. So, so you're out of the tournament, right? Yeah. Okay. Com All right. So, long dead. So, so deck lists are here. So we've got LSV with Countertop. And he does have a counter uh, counterbalance on the board right now. Playing with a... A deck that looks... A blind counterbalance. Yeah. The yeah. Anna Jace. Not, a, not then, uh, such a blind counterbalance. But Alan is playing a deck that looks very much like something that uh, Alex Hamblin would build. It is... Green in taxes with, with Dark, Dark Confidant. Confidant. Right. I like it. No, I'm down. And so... Uh, Dark Confidant is exactly the type of guy that's really three, nice in this deck. Only three Dark Confidants. Well, look, he almost was going to play four. Yeah, he's but he had to make... <laughs> Consistency. You have, to make, you have to make room for the, the Mangara. Yeah, the Megara's are kind of cute, and only a three. <laughs> They're so cute. The only three knight are the relic quarries, which is kind of right. Weird yeah, Megara, real, real important. Right. Um, well, like, okay, take a look at this. Every every one of these cards is in any reasonable cube except for one. <laughs> is that Megara of course? Yeah. <laughs> well, so we should. Well, Caracas isn't in every cube. That's fair, but it's, it probably should be in a lot of it's cubes. Yeah, it's it's really good. Like, I mean, so the thing is, I think it's actually a good metric. You look at a legacy deck and see how many cards from a cube it's playing, and then you're like, oh, well. Yeah, exactly. That seems pretty reasonable to me. Like, uh, I mean, not necessarily. Like, if you're playing a linear deck. Right, like if you're playing a combo or whatever, sure. Yeah. Like, Man, none of these Tarbelter cards are in my <laughs> cube. Yeah, dagger. Um, but or, if, yeah, but if you're playing, like, just a normal deck, like, look at look at Luis's deck. How many... How many cards aren't in the cube? Like counterbalance, Counter -counter maybe not. Pyro blast, <laughs> awkward. Yeah, that's how you know pyro blast is terrible. Like, just, you know, <laughs> should be in the cube. Should Although I can see actually pyro blast in the cube. It's kind of if you, if you play with sideboards, it's okay. <laughs> Jace Balin, nice. Yeah, uh, Jerry and uh, Luis were apparently having some arguments about Jace, uh, and J and Luis wanted to run them. Jerry didn't, so. Uh, this isn't standard, like. I'm not. You don't. You, you don't play Jace Belair in, in Legacy. It's your. <laughs> this is your big, big finish. You know what I mean. So, uh, so while we were busy talking about how, uh, how awesome. Did Brett just cube cards, concede? Uh, I or did he win? No, Brett won that game. Bro, oh, he had guys in play. Yeah, oh, he Brett, had the vials. He had double yeah, yeah, vials. Yeah, completely and makes sense. No good. He he snuck some creatures into play. <laughs> A Aether Vial, now that's a card. Yeah, yeah, see, that's a good card. Like, like as, so you're a counterbalance play, player, Adam. Like, you you know how this matchup kind of goes. What do you think is important here, like, for Luis? It, it, it absolutely hinges on uh, Aether Vial. Okay. Like, let's see, does uh, Luis have Needles? Needles is the best card of all time. Yeah, there are two Needles in his board. Okay, just in his board. Like, part of the part of the reason I want it, like, in counterbalance, part of the reason I play, still play Trinket Mages, you want redundancy on tops. That's nice, but the Pything Needle, you get it so often. It's so good. Right. So do we, we think Louis Springs in here? Do we think the Sower's probably, right? So Sower, yeah, sower's, Needle, Submerge for sure. Yeah, Submerge is the greatest card of all time. There's only one, which I was kind of surprised about. Well, it, it kind of... Right. Yeah. Everything's the greatest time. card of all time. I mean, <laughs> if it's in my Legacy deck, it's awesome. Or in a cube. Yeah, that too. So Mangara Corridor, not, not, no, so no, no, not so much. The rest of the day, but I like Brett Zag. This deck looks really, really powerful. Yeah, I agree. Like that, the addition of Dark Confidant seems awesome, and he's got even Sword of Fire and Ice, which is a pretty sweet little one you can tutor up with your Stoneforge Mystics. Yeah, I think there are too many Stoneforge Mystics. I'm not a huge like equipment's just not all that good in like. Like I mean, I'd play the GTA, sure, or I'd be fine just maybe cutting the Mystics and just jamming GTA, right? Like you don't yeah, even need them. Yeah, that's fine as well. Just adds plus two to your GTA costs. Um, right. So sometimes, sometimes you vial them in, and you know. How do you feel about Gaddock Teague in this format? Is it just insane? It's not insane, but it's it's fine. It's yeah. like meddling mage, only you never mess up. <laughs> 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 that's a good quote. Can we tweet that, please? Right. I that's, got it. I that's got exactly, it. exactly what it is. Mo meddling mage is insane if you always hit. Like cabal therapy is awesome. Right. If you hit. Right. And, and that's then, why people don't play. Like it's too hard to like. Like, you're lying to yourself if you think you're going to hit on everything. Right, sure. Um, yeah, this deck looks pretty cool. Mother of Runes is, like, pretty, really powerful. Yeah, Mother of Runes is one of the reasons. W one card I actually really like, uh, a friend of mine uh, in Phoenix plays the the blue-white version of okay. it. He actually made a uh, top 16 at Denver, uh, Alex Kirikov. 
is his name, but he plays, he favors the blue-white deck, and I think the best card in his deck is uh, Weathered Wayfarer. Oh. That card is nice. really impressive. Like, yeah. you, you can do all sorts of tricks with it. Like, in this, in this particular deck, like, it's not about what you can search up, but, like, how you reduce your land count yep. temporarily. Like, you have, you have, uh, fetch land tricks. You activate a fetch land, respond. Activate weather wayfarer. Uh, fair. Get it. Get another fetch land. Or and the same works with uh, wasteland. Right. Wasteland. Yeah. You activate wasteland in response. Search up another wasteland. Right. right. Yeah, that seems really great. You can also find your rockets if you play here with the Mangara. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, you it makes it, it makes the Mangara like playable. <laughs> I mean, I think I think Mangara is really cute. It is definitely the card that stands out the most to me. Yeah, absolutely. Like if I were to build this deck, I would play Vindicate. I guess, yeah, I guess we are white, white, black. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is a vindicate. Uh, suspend one vindicate. <laughs> I mean, Unless you have a Krakus. In which case, it's just you know, it's done. All well, right, you so, can't aether vial the. So, um, ooh, so here we go. Vial. Game start and uh, aether vial sticks. Uh, probably. It's always it's always rough when you have the brainstorm in response to your really awesome spell. Yeah. And uh, I thought that, I thought he pushed that aether vial in place. Days. Well, but no, no dazes. Okay, that takes out. You, I don't agree with Jays, but you can play it here. What don't you like out of the LSV's list? I'm not a I'm not a big Fire Spout fan. Okay. Obviously, I hate the the main deck Fire Blast. There are plenty of non-blue decks, <laughs> and it's not like all the non-blue decks are terrible or anything like that. Right. Um, the Jace Balerans should be Mind Sculptors. It's just four Mind Sculptors. I mean, not maybe not four. I play three. And that's what Jerry was doing. So we've got a turn two counterbalance from uh, Luis here, but that uh, Aether Vial is going to be an issue. Well, he also set up the. Luis knows the top card of his deck right, right. now. So, Luis being Luis, I would fully expect him to either not have a two in his hand or have a two on top of his deck. Yep. If he has a two, it's it's on top of his deck right now. All right. Well, he's going to try this. And <laughs> master. <laughs> Luis is so <laughs> level. Like, like I, it's hard to know if he's a master or if he just like was like, yeah, yeah he's, he's just like, <laughs> I don't want him to thought seize this. <laughs> like, but it was good play, and there goes yeah, the top. There's the top. That? So he's got the combo, but that uh, aether vial is gonna pros potent. And there's a Crimson Grip in a uh, red sand right now. So Crimson Grip's interesting. I I always wonder like, you can definitely tell like. Who knows like, if they think about when to grow. Most most people that don't think about it will just end a turn it. Right. Sometimes that's correct. Sometimes but when I play, right. I always adjust my deck so that when I pass the turn, there's a three on top of my deck. Right, exactly. If possible. Like, I've activated it a lot in, like, response to top activations and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like probably weird. the safest time to do it is right before they draw. Yeah. 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 Sorry. So yeah, but so I mean, he has that, but he might not even need it like that. Aether vial is just like, like he said, should do so it right potent. now, Abs right now. Oh, and he but didn't. He, but he didn't, and and who knows? Like, at least, I mean, he put the one on top of his deck. I don't know how much. I have actually no idea how much Luis uh, plays the format. That's, fair. That's one of those things that like you need. Doing it again. It's like it keeps coming on floor. Um. Oh, be careful what you what you touch down there, Joey. We're having a, there was, there was a cord good good thing. There's no video right now of us. <laughs> I'm just saying that I'll just put that one out. Um, coming unplugged. So while, because it was stretched, the cord was stretched. <laughs> uh, while we were tempor temporarily away, no, oh, they were uh, seeing Drunk it. Drunk confidant we got viled into play. Oh. No, and no, revealed no, 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 a gaddick T. Dark confidant is a spicy one. Aether vial. I must say, I can get behind that interaction. And Mother of Runes, how's that? You're just gonna keep getting cards off that Dark Confidant, like. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't attack. Not sure what we was expecting. Why didn't he like, serve? Like click would be a, a reason not to attack. Because you got Mother of Runes, right? But like, you don't want him to get like combo like Fire Spout it. Sure. If maybe maybe uh maybe Brett's of the uh, opinion that if he just takes forever and just milks his cards, yeah, I mean, he's just not gonna it's lose. It's true. He's definitely a slow and deliberate player. Uh, I think my favorite story of Brett is uh, the first deck list of his I ever saw was uh, States right after Kamigawa came out. You remember, you know, you were playing that States, right, Adam? So you know what oh. the format was like. It was like, there was Affinity and there was like some Death Cloud. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. the Kamas Reach was like your favorite card ever. Yeah. And uh, so I look at, at his top eight deck list, he wins States, and it's like all one ofs. Like, just literally, there's like. 31 of us, maybe 20, 31 of us. It's insane. And so I finally get down and I see, oh, gifts ungiven, that makes sense. Like, he's getting his one of us. And I look, one gifts ungiven. So it's just, you know, 
draw the right cards at the right time. And Brett's always one for modifying decks, playing uh, spicy one ups in his creations. And uh, these are confidants are looking great. Like it's a really nice addition. That's not, that's not necessarily like a, a creation. Ooh, that's a. Uh. Oh. Man, he's just asking you to get blown out by fire spout here. Yeah. Oh, here it is. That's rough. Oh, okay. He has a crocker, so there's no no harm, no foul. <laughs> Fair. All right, that's legit. Yeah, I'm. Okay. Good so, hand, uh, Caracas. And there's Tarmogoy for that to create some problems. That is actually going to create a, quite a few problems. That guy's big. I've only had. Oh, he's using my guard portal here. He's not though. played his top yet. I don't see a top anywhere where it should be. Uh, Am I going to top of his library right now? Yeah, I think so. Or he oh. might have had to tap out last turn to go... Uh, I think he, he put it on top of his library at some point. He had to go Fire Spout Charmogoyf last turn. Oh, he felt like he needed a Charmogoyf Fire Spout? Yeah, because uh, with the Aether Vial, I don't know how relevant okay. that's going to be. That makes sense. So, uh, Alan Fetch is like, here. Uh, Louis... <coughs> Luis knows that he can't win a thousand turn game in this current... Right. I don't know if he has. You, sh you should know to bring in, uh, needle. I would think so. Like, just so you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that aether vial comes. It's gonna be really strong here. Yeah, aether vial is one of those cards that like it just uh, it gets right around countercop. It, it invalidates most of the cards. It, Cards like, like I know in Murphy, that's huge too, right? Like Aether Vial and the Murphy. Yeah, that, that's how I lost every game. Yeah. All four of them I played today. So so here he goes Murphilk using Murphilk. the Vial yeah, to play, play the Gaddic Teague so again. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he replays the Gaddic Teague off of Aether Vial. Meanwhile, and then, uh, Croson grip grips the, the counterbalance. He <laughs> flips top for value. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Wow, yeah. Then the swords to plowshares on the Tarn Yeah, Brett's definitely back in the driver's seat. Yep. And Luis had a yeah. Luis had a strong turn on his, but yeah, and that but Brett just came right back. <coughs> and Aether Vial is just gonna keep doing work. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of like what what things are like if if Luis could somehow kill the yeah. yeah that was that. that was the one downside of Swordsing there. Right. Because he tapped was, his uh, Caracas. So what was it that he used? I fire Luis, is it fire spell? Oh, he just spell. cast fire, fire Spell just for the one. Just Gattic for Gaddick because he Caracas. Does that mean his, his last it. card might be uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor? Um, perhaps. I mean, because why? I mean, how important is that uh, T really? Uh, no. Well, Gaddick T. Ooh, another one. Brutal. Oh, that's. Like what about Teak? What was that? Uh, he, if he's gonna do anything, he can't just like take two a turn out forever. Oh right, sure, this, sure. This is his one chance. Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, so oh, that's how he lands the yeah, Jace. So yeah. So it was he uses Jace. swords to plow shares. Oh, swords is really curious. <laughs> except, yeah, for <laughs> except for except for solving Jace. Jace the okay. And now his vials tap, so we can't even a vial on a guy end step and be like attack. Right. 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 So right. yeah, see, so he he used the swords of plowshares targeting the. So uh, Lewis is going to get two brainstorms at least out of this. Targeting a Gaddic Teague, and then uh, Alan had to use his Caracas to return the Gaddic Teague to protect it, and uh, that gave Louis Scott Vargas the window he needed to land Jace the Mind Sculptor, um, and of course with the Aether Vial tapped at the end of uh, LSV's turn, uh, or during LSV's turn, Alan could not. Could not vial out the Gaddic Teague. Fourteen, New England Patriots three. Damn. Nice. Um, and that that Nether Rock Court is going to be a big issue. Yeah. So I mean, well, every creature that right. gets played is going to be right a and big it, issue. At this. And that's that's the one defining thing about like every side. It's not like in standard where some some creatures' sides matter. Every creature matters. Right, because they're all huge. All the good yeah. ones, or they all have good abilities. Or they whatever. all have good abilities. They all have relevant abilities in play. Like. Right. So, I mean, the thing about Jace is he could bounce that knight here, but the next turn you can just kick the vial up to three and then go end step vial and knight, well, and, and he can't deal with it. And additionally, if he bounces the knight, uh, Gaddick T is coming into play Right. at the end of the turn. So. Right, that just fights that Jace and takes it down. Yeah. Right. All right, so he's thinking, is that repeal? Yep. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Man. A, that's a nice one. I, uh, a friend so, of mine in Phoenix uh, told me to play repeals, and, and I actually if, played if it for the... First time and repeal is actually pretty pretty good. You know what's in repeal's mana cost? An X symbol. If that get a T had been on the battlefield already, if he had battled oh, on wow. his turn for once, he could not have cast that repeal. But because it's funny because for every turn so far, he just keeps he, he's been oh. ma main phasing it. Oh, so he's gonna use Sower of Temptation yeah, to steal the Knight of the Reliquary. Oh, that, that's a big deal. So steal the knight. 
Very nice. So he uh, he repeals the aether vial. Um, good. And in in response, Alan uses the aether vial to to put a Gaddic Teague into play. Uh, aether vial or the repeal resolves. Aether vial goes back to uh, Alan's hand, and then LSV taps four for a sower of sower of temptation, oh, stealing no. a knight oh. of the reliquary. <laughs> My favorite card. Uh, <laughs> that's actually kind of sick that's here. The, that's the Mangar of Corondor. Right. Corondor? So Corondor. Yeah. So so Alan just cast. Mangara of Korondor, and then the Aether Vial, which we knew he had in his hand. Uh, he does have a live Caracas to return a legend, basically protect, for, for this turn, protect his creatures. But also, once that Mangara is active, he's got that that combo kind of online, and Aether have Vial... Have you guys gone over the combo yet? Yeah, 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 we talked okay. a little bit about it, yeah. So the Aether Vial ticks up to three, yeah, and eventually... new development, and... I mean, I remember doing this back with Momentary Blink and Time Spiral Block. Right, right, right. It's the same, same concept. Yeah, so basically, for those who are just tuning in, what you can do is Mangar of Corridor says tap, colon, remove Mangar of Corridor and target permanent from the game. But because uh, it's in the resolution instead of the activation, you can use Mangara on something, return it with Karakas, and then the rest of the ability will resolve and remove something. So Mangara is in your hand. And their guy is gone. You can hit lands, whatever you want. Yeah, it's target permanent. It's a it's a reusable vindicate. Yeah, of course, resetting that that a vial was huge because now he has to risk casting it every turn. Oh, that fire spout is quite the beating. So and the red query is huge for Luis. Yeah, there's a fire that's spout a, from LSV. That's fire spout number three this game. Yeah, yeah. And this gives uh, Brett the option of saving. I'm pretty sure. Saving your uh, Mangara yeah. is correct. And, and once again, if he had main phase, that is such a... Yeah, it's such a huge... It's such a huge blow. And not it's such a small him. play. He played so... You know, he's been playing very well right. this game from yeah. from what we can see, yeah. at least. And then just that one thing where he <laughs> skips a turn I mean, of I mean, not I, having I Gaddick Teague I think play. what's likely happened is, you know, he had Jason's like, okay, well, he has his forecast to cost spell and play. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then nobody the, got the, the, the one repeal. And that's the thing about Gaddick Teague is, like, you would never meddling mage a repeal. No, but it does Whatever. stop. Right. right, but you get to name like you get to name more than one card right. as well. It's just not always the card you want to name. So. <laughs> Shuts off your own spells. I mean, so does Meddling Mage, but it's kind of awkward sometimes. Every now and then. Well, I mean, yeah, so how big is that Knight of the Reliquary? Anybody have? Uh, Might as well be 800, 800. It, Yeah, well, it, it's probably at least eight. It's pretty big. We know that. Uh, I don't know how much LSV just got in for, but we have the life totals in front of us with Brett Allen at eight life and LSV at twenty two. Brett Allen's side of the board is empty. He that does was have. To me. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm thinking. Like Mangara. It's entirely possible that's lethal. I mean, that's right, but he does, he does have Mangara uh, in his hand. Now, yeah, I mean, that's whether or not it Trump, resolves, that's, that's, help. that's what I'm saying. Whether or not it it resolves, so so is he? Uh, not gonna lie, I might have wanted to vindicate right here. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's counterbalance Although, on on the board. So yeah. why did he had it? Why did he let that resolve without even Lu activating? Counterbalance. I'm sure Luis knows. Oh, he knew what the top was. That's right. Okay. So he he just lets that resolve count as the next one. He's gonna bounce the Mangara with Jace. And that should be good. Right. Oh, or dirtle around a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the two. It's possible Knight isn't lethal yet. Yeah, so that's, he says that's bounce, swing, and uh, we're gonna find out how big is the Knight. Is it big enough for? Um, Looks like he's probably no. one life. Must be. He's got to be pretty low. I mean, that's. Yeah, yep. one life. Yep. Yeah, that was it. Okay, give me back my knight. So he's topping to try and find a fetch line. Makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, if it's gonna put him at one, then. Yeah, man, that repeal was such a blowout that yeah. game. Yeah. Seriously, like. It's just a ma just a matter of having uh, having that window to cast the repeal. Yeah. We'll do this after that. Just three, Jump three. it. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so what are these guys going to be sideboard again? So, your counterbalance player, Adam, what, what do we got out of, out of uh, LSV side? We're already, we're already in, you know, yeah, going to I game mean, three, he, so he they may not be... He has all the fire spots in the deck. He's, he wants four. I mean, like we said earlier, the, the submerge, uh, the right. two needles, and the sowers, and that's... All right, so nothing you think you would change for game three? No, I don't think anything... There's no, there's no like, dazes or... Sp or there's the spell pairs, but you don't want to either on the play or the draw. <laughs> well, in that case... In this matchup, at least. That's fair. I mean, because now we see... There's, there's all dudes. Uh, you don't want it against an Aether Vow deck very often. Right. I mean, now they've seen more of each other's decks, so... Game they may make a few changes. Pretty fast. So, yeah, I mean, they're both going back to their sideboards, right? Yeah, they're, they're still more than more than half of the time left in the round, so yeah. they're they're comfortable as right. far as uh, 
And Elsie's like, time. <laughs> ironically, Elsie's like, well, I'm gonna have in his deck. Like, maybe this repeal isn't good anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's still very good. Like, repeal is very strong against Aether Vial. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, the... like, you, you buy yourself, not only do you buy yourself a ton of turns, but if you have a, it lets you try and counterbalance something again. Yeah. So if you get the counterbalance in play, repeal is one of the better cards. For sure. Yeah, I mean, who do you think is favored in this matchup in general? You know, when I was looking at the just the straight green in Texas deck that uh, made, debuted last week. When Lewis Laskin was playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was really scared of that deck. That deck has a lot of real cards you really care about. Um, I would give Luis a slight edge, if only because of Fire Spout. But this is, this is going to... Whoever plays better draws better. Like this is a match of magic. It's yeah, not. Like, I don't think the the match. Of, I don't think this game's gonna be determined by the respective decks. I think yeah. they're close. Enough. I mean, they're two good players, and like la the last two games were great to watch. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. Game one was Spe especially game two. Like that was, yeah, game two was a nice game, and and literally the smallest of mistakes just right. <laughs> steamrolled. Like if he if he gets to keep his eighth ball, uh, like he gets a. Do stuff in time. Right. Gets the, it's the Mangara end step and then right, right, untap right. Karakasa. Like, yeah, we've seen the small mistakes be huge today, and that just shows you how skill intensive this format is. Like the it tiniest really is. things, especially with a deck like Counterbalance, where you like your brainstorms matter, right? Where uh, what order Every, everything you matters. Matter. Like, yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, and there are other games just like any any format where you're just like, uh, uh, and then you're dead. Yeah, like, I mean, like you play against top the Goblins. Balance, nice storm deck. Yeah, or you're like, Goblins like, uh, uh, pile, pile driver, war chief, pile driver, pile driver, like, you know, right. game over. But but even then, that, that is, like, Goblins is a deck whose nut draw is actually not that good. It in, it's like, it, it's an overwhelming advantage type of deck. It's, right. not, it's not a deck that tries to, like, nut draw you. Yeah. Right, so the players have kept, and uh, <laughs> Vile again. Vile no on turn one. Hmm. Uh, or either either he doesn't have Force of Will, or he might have one of the deals, which may or may not even be in his deck. Like, I don't know. Like, I, we've seen most of Luz's cards. I can't imagine, like, he had a counter spell last game, and that would be one of the cards I would side out. I mean, it's potentially that he boarded in Needle. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. He, There's he the found needle. it. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I saw a Force yeah, in his hand. <laughs> and he takes up the Aether Vial, just in case. Hey, keep in mind, Brett does have Quasali Pride Mage in his deck, right, so he exactly. can nug down and, that and Mangara. You know, yeah. And, and Mangara. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it doesn't stop him from ticking up, he just can't tap it to right. put any creatures in Right, play. it only stops activated abilities. So, uh, cracks, uh, it's fetches again. Wind what are we going to see this turn? Yeah. Uh, probably a forest or a plains, or at least a dual land that has both of those characteristics. Or, or both. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So uh, here comes the two drop. Oh, there's Tarmogoyf. So the zero one Tarmogoyf. One, one two. Oh, sorry, one two. That's fine. That's fine. Sometimes you gotta swat. The thing about Tarmogoyf is uh, every every interaction now grows the Tarmogoyf. Right, exactly. And so yeah, there's gonna be a lot of interaction like happening. If, if Brett goes like creature counter spell, attack you for three. Right. Uh, interestingly enough, he chose to not take up the Aether Vial this turn. I, uh, I mean, that, yeah, that doesn't make it bigger or anything. Is that another vial stuck in... Oh, that is. It's another, another vial stuck in Brett's hand. So, like you were saying, the needle just needled yeah. the two cards. Like. Right. And with a card that does nothing but its activated, but it has no utility other than its right. needleable... If you can needle a whole card, like... It kind of it kind of sucks when you needle Wasteland, because they get, still get to tap it for mana. Uh, Alex... Bertaccini Ber 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 <laughs> just walked by. He is currently 4-1 with his Merfolk deck after taking an early round 3 loss. And uh, he is pretending to be the Hulk over here. Yeah. M meanwhile, uh, we've got uh, Luis Topping. And uh, Brett, 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 Brett a nice little play. I think a lot of players would just main phase the Wasteland there. But he waited until after Luis topped and had used his mana, figured out which card he wanted to go mm -hmm. for the Wasteland. Yeah. These players are playing really tight. And like you said, it's really a match decided by like who plays better, I think. Yeah, like if, if Luis... Uh, if Luis is like mm -hmm. on the assumption that oh like you know Brett really needs his mana like and might just stack the cards might just stack the cards wrong might 
put a three drop on top. Counterbalance? Or the wrong uh, one, not put a land on top. There it is, counterbalance. So we've got counterbalance top and then uh, pithing needle on that's, Luis's that, side, which is named uh, aether me. vial, right? He's yeah. getting, so those those aether vials, you know, they're they're sitting there, yeah. but they can't do anything. Man, at pride the mage has to resolve this turn. Luis, uh, Luis is a huge favorite. Right, right. Yeah. at the moment it looks right. good for for Luis. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Luis <laughs> <laughs> that together. That was pretty awesome. But he just flips the bat. Bug bug bat. There's no better feeling than oh, man. Cause, like You get you get him so often too. Well, everybody sculpts their their game to get spells that they to make people blind counterbalance. Swords to plowshares on the Knight of the Reliquary that was just resolved uh, during Brett Allen's turn. Now it looks like Luis is going to uh, yeah, probably, he probably to top right now. Or? One to two more removal spells and then he's got this game locked up. I mean, he's got sword the, in his hand right now. The, the whole goal of uh, Luis's deck is to get his counterbalance top combination with the and take the Aether Vials out of the equation, either by countering them or in, or in this case, needling them. Yeah. Right, he does. He oh, is fighting with a Tarmogoyf right now, which uh, is getting pretty fat. And Brett just passes back. Well, a lot of times when the, your opponent has active counterbalance top, the correct, the correct line of strategy against it is to accumulate, just draw go, accumulate cards of different costs. Right. In, in the hope of, like, maybe he has to, like, won't have a one, one turn, or like won't have enough mana to like change the the configuration at the top of his deck. Right. 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 Or, or alternatively, he can uh, wait for a crossing grip. Right. Exactly. Crossing grip sit on is valuable here too. And uh, yeah, Alan's got two grips and a nature now, stream. Which now, what really he, does he want to grip the uh, the needle and then just pop stuff out with the vial? Probably it would be. It would depend on the rest of his hand. I doubt right. he has the cards to do that. Yeah. I mean, you pretty much. I think you would want to blow up. Uh, oh, so there's a sower of temptation takes that for that tarmogoyf. That is, is that's brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although Luis is tapped well, out right now, I, so. That does, yeah, that does give that's uh, relevant. Gives him a chance to play some spells. Like not one drops because he can just activate the top and draw. Right, exactly. Although the one drop can serve as bait for the bigger things, right? You yes. cast your, your Mother of Runes and he's like, well, if I or counter it, Or even if it's down. a Swords of Pasha, say he casts the Mother of Runes, Luis will use his top, and but in respond, <coughs> he can sword. So if two one drops, if one of them swords, because swords is very valuable here. So he taps two, and he's just going to go for it. Here comes Tarmogoyf. Uh, Luis flips. We have a counter spell, oh, counter spell on top. Counter he also knew that, that that was there. Yeah, he counters and the, so it looks the like opposing Tarmogoyf. doesn't have any action. Because he's got essentially six mana sources in play. And top, An another top. top. Now yeah. that shuts down pretty much all one drops. Yeah. The second top is su surprisingly valuable. Yeah, plus you can just like crack it and like crack a fetch land and you know, shuffle right. it you away. Right, you can always get rid of it if you want to, but you don't always want to. Right. The thing is, the counterbalance is weird that you don't need that many cards in your hand. Like, I get mocked for playing Curse School, but when you have the game, like, when you're doing what you need to be doing, you play out a lot of your cards. You just use your spells. Oh, so, Brett Allen, kind of uh, Brett Allen attempts to resolve a Tarmogoyf, a he, second one he did in a row. Spell. And, so, uh, and uh, looks like Luis it's gonna looks like he is... Huh, that's See, if I, if I were Luis, I would have kept the two on top of the deck. Because especially with two tops, you can just draw them at will. Right. So it looks like that Tarmogoyf sticks. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, the... Okay, huh. so... There's a Swords to Plowshares for the Tarmogoyf, and there and goes uh, the Tarmogoyf. And Brett's starting to look a little dejected. Yeah, it looks yeah. like he doesn't have much. He probably... He, the thing about it, it doesn't look like Brett is flooded, but he, he very much is flooded this game. This is, this is why Legacy decks don't play that many lands. Brett has six mana sources in play, and he's already played a wasteland. So, like, essentially, essentially, he's now drawn eight lands and only about four spells. Right. And this, this and those two vials not being able to be used is such a, such a right. blowout. Like, it it's just like a double. It doesn't mulligan. help him. Yeah. It, it doesn't protect the spells that he actually does draw. He yep. just has to run them out there. So, meanwhile, I believe, uh, I think that Goyf is a three-four, um, although. Not entirely sure because I thought that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's swords, land, creature for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the graveyard. Oh, and so, uh, okay, yeah. so that's a swing for yeah, five. Yeah, I don't think there's a sorcery, and there wouldn't be an artifact. Not All the artifacts and, enchant and, and enchantments are in play. <laughs> Brett's got two turns to come up with something. It looks like. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Even if he, even if he finds a grip, I don't know if it's gonna yeah, be enough. I, yeah. 
I'd I'd be impressed if uh, if Brad can come back this game. And there's counter spell in his hand too. Right? Yeah. yeah. And a brainstorm, it's, I think I saw. Yeah. A brainstorm helps put. Yeah, like. I'm just saying, it's just another over. way to. Uh, and there's only two cards in Brett's hand, I believe. Yeah, this has been very aggressive with his, uh, with his lock. Like he has such an advantage. I would, I would literally be doing nothing. All right, I think that might be it. That looks like the slow draw of defeat. Yeah, Except the, oh, not third not third the third vial. Yeah. It slips it up. Mother runes, swords, aether vial. Still had all these one drops. Not LSV takes the match. Yep, that's that. Well, what record does that put him at? Uh, 5-0. 5-0. Or, well, is it 5-0 or 4-0-1? 4 0 one he, he got the He had the draw, draw yeah. So yeah. Luis says 4-0-1, and is it, I assume Brett the same? Brett's probably 4-1. Yeah, Brett was undefeated.